Hello, I'm Bob Bradshaw, and welcome to this installation of the Ocelot Taillight Bracket Kit. Now these KTM 500 EXCs come from the factory with this monstrosity of a tail section, which is great for DOT, but not so great for the trail. It's heavy, it's bulky. As soon as you get this thing over, you're gonna break off one of these turn signals. So you might as well get that out of the way now. The other thing is it's heavy. So as you ride down the road, this thing kind of vibrates. And if you're one of the riders that likes to hit big jumps, the first big jump that you hit and this thing comes down as your suspension is going up, this thing is gonna get chewed right off. I can speak from experience. I did that exact same thing on my 07 450 EXC before I made this modification. So this is a modification I believe that you really need to make if you're gonna ride these bikes hardcore off-road. Now in the Ocelot taillight bracket kit, what you're gonna get is these pieces right here on the styrofoam board. It's gonna give you the complete undertail section and all of the hardware that you need to make the conversion. So this is gonna be a great way to give you that enduro look on the back of your bike. You're gonna have a nice small tail light. You're gonna have license plate lights that shine down and a place to put your plate. That really is the bare minimum that you need in order to ride off road. If you're gonna be taking your bike to the street, you're gonna to need to find a way to attach turn signals. Sick Ass Racing has these amazing turn signals right here. And this here is the LED flasher that's gonna allow these LED turn signals to flash at the same rate as the stock incandescence. Now these two pieces do not come in the Ocelot taillight bracket kit. And the reason for that is there are lots of people who wanna just run the brake light taillight. But as I alluded to just a second ago, if you're gonna ride this bike on the street, as it was intended, you need to put turn signals and a flasher relay in. So this here is a really good example of what the stock looks like and the minimalist piece that we're gonna put on. This is gonna save a lot of weight and it's gonna keep this fender from getting munched by your tire. And that's really the main reason that I like it. So let's get busy. So the first step is gonna to be to remove the OEM seat. It's gonna have two bolts on the side. You already know where those are at, so we'll skip to the next part. Underneath the tail section of the bike, you're gonna have two screws towards the front, two screws towards the rear. You're gonna go ahead and pop those out. And then back where the battery bracket is, there's two more bolts you're gonna to have to remove in order to get that whole under tail section to drop down out of the bike. So a really neat thing I like about this sick ass turn signals is they are KTM specific. There's a version. So we're literally gonna unplug the stock turn signals and plug these guys in after get everything set up. I really like that plug and play feature. The next step is gonna be to remove all the factory connectors. This is done by using a flat blade screwdriver, pushing down the pin and then pulling the two pieces apart. Once all those connectors are removed, we're gonna simply cut the wire harness. I usually cut it close to where the OEM tail light is. That way I've got extra wire to work with. You're then gonna go ahead and remove the sheath that covers the wires on both the Ocelot version and the stock wire harness. You're then gonna slide some heat shrink tubing, the small size you can possibly fit onto each of the wires and push them all the way back into the casing. This is gonna allow you to have a single layer of protection over each of those wires once you do the soldering job. Next, you're gonna take a larger piece of heat shrink and slip it on over the casing itself. This is gonna allow you to have a watertight seal once this whole conversion process is done. We're then gonna strip the ends off each of the wires that we're gonna be soldering together. So what you're seeing here is you're seeing me tie the yellow and the white wire together. Those are the two positive wires, if you will, or the power wires. I'm tying the two brown wires together because those are both ground. So yellow is going to blue. Now black is going to ground. Next, we're going to take the white and green wire and secure that to the red wire. Once those are soldered together, we're gonna go ahead and finish it off with a little bit of heat shrink tubing. Again, this is heat shrink tubing we've already slid onto those wires. We just pull it out of the housing, slide it over the connection, and then we're just gonna add some heat to shrink it on down. So right now we're taking the turn signal. We're gonna set it up here in place. We're gonna look at where we're gonna want it to sit. So in order to get this piece to stay, we just threw one screw up underneath so it's not flopping around while I take a look at the orientation. And now that I know where I'm gonna want it to sit, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little Sharpie mark 
kind of around a couple inconspicuous places so I know exactly where it's going to be at. I'm going to step over to the other side, basically do the same thing. Right here, you're going to notice that our hole is a little bit too small. So we're going to use the reamer router tool. So issue is this guy right here blocks us. Once the turn signal wiring has been pushed through the outside of the bracket and secured with the supplied hardware, we're going to drill another hole through the top of the bracket so that the wires can go through to meet up with the wire loom. All right, now that we have the tail light all wired up, we're ready to work on the turn signals. Now, one tip that I would like to give you is before you disconnect your turn signals, take a look at which one's on the left and which one's on the right. As you can see over here, we have labeled ours right side with a little green tape with a little R on it and left is red tape with an L on it. That way we always know what we're doing. But um, if you forgot to take a look at which was left and which was right before you disconnected them, under the headlight, the same colored wires are up there on their respective sides. So now it's time to plug these in. So now we're going to go ahead and plug in our left and our right turn signals. I really like these sick ass units for the KTM. They're plug and play. They use the same connectors. It's really nice. So the completed wire harness is going to run right up into this channel here on this tail light section. This is a really neat section that allows you to be able to completely conceal and hide all this wiring. And then the rest of the wiring is going to get bunched up right here underneath the tail light in this crevice. So once you get those wires run all the way back to where the tail light is, we're going to make our final connections, kind of wrap these wires around each other and kind of position them down in this crevice just behind the tail light. Sometimes it's nice to use a zip tie in order to button everything up and to keep everything in place. So now that we have all the wiring buttoned up, we're going to go ahead and set this Ocelot tail light bracket in place. Starting at the very front of the motorcycle, there's two holes that those snap into. And then you can see right here, we have these tabs that slide down into holes that exist on that taillight bracket kit. Once it's all lined up, we're going to go ahead and reinstall all six pieces of our hardware. So now that we have all the wiring run, it's a matter of putting our license plate bracket in place. And I'm gonna go ahead, um, I'm gonna go ahead and drill this hole out right here real quick. One second. So I don't know what I was thinking when we were originally drilling this out, but I was imagining the license plate was going to be sitting lower or further down than it actually ended up being. If I were to do this installation again, I'd take those turn signals and move them up tighter towards the fender. So the base of the light is sitting against the fender itself. The problem with that is there is a lot of framework in that tail section. So the amount of material you're going to have to drill out in order to get those to fit right in that location is going to be a little bit more intensive. But for all intents and purposes, this is going to get us down the road. We've got a tail light, a brake light, license plate light, and turn signals here on the back of the bike. Now the relay flasher is mandatory because we replaced incandescent bulbs with LEDs. In order to get those to flash, 
at a regular rate instead of the fast sport bike flash, we need to install a relay. Let's get busy. So this shroud comes off quite simply. There's two rubber grommets on the outside. Just undo those straps, pull the uh, headlight housing out, and then unplug the OEM flasher and plug in the new relay flasher. I usually zip tie this to somewhere inside the bike so it doesn't rattle around. Kind of makes for a nice finished off look. We're then gonna button everything back up, put the headlight back in place, and we're ready to roll. And there we have it, the Ocelot taillight bracket kit for a KTM 500 EXC. This mod is a fantastic update to the back end of your bike. As you can see, all of this goes in the garbage can and this is what you're left with. You can see that there's not nearly the amount of weight so that this tail doesn't flex at all when you push on it. So this is a great way to clean up the rear end of your bike. I'm Kyle Bradshaw, thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you like more information like this, please hit the subscribe button. Until next time, take care and ride safe.